Hi everyone, welcome. Do you remember this diagram? It was this diagram that we used to manage the feedings on one of my worm bins. So all those bins behind me have worms living in them. And the, uh, the system that now qualifies as being my oldest system, that, that doesn't count my vermi bag mini, which I expect to keep going. Technically that's my oldest system, but the oldest system that I plan to bring to an end today, as a matter of fact, is my mixed red worms where we did these ping pong feedings for a while. So today we're bringing that system to an end and that system is right here behind me in its rightful spot. Being the oldest of my systems, it's got the bait box going on in here and spoiler alert, this thing is worm free. I did check in on it just a few days ago and at that point already, I think I picked maybe six worms out of the material in here, included them in the bait box with the rest of the gang that has already you know, evacuated the material. So today it's reunion time. We're gonna haul those little guys out. That officially brings this to an end. And after two weeks, I would imagine that the red worm population over in the newest of my systems over there is probably ready for a feeding. So why don't we get started? Well, there's this little souvenir from the last check-in 14 days ago. And uh, it was at that point we did the haul out of the majority of the worms that used to live in this stuff. So this thing right here, this envelope, will uh, serve as a nice little placeholder for us to put this on. Um, just make sure we don't take too much of this material with us. And we'll, uh, we'll not dig in too much. We'll just uh, pretty much remove it at this point. And if we were to encounter a worm or two, I suppose it wouldn't be too unusual. So perhaps we could just do that really quick. I'd really like to just consider this system as um, complete at this point. But I've already spotted a wormy. So I think it's safe to assume we should probably expel a little bit of energy in here and just make sure we're not leaving anybody behind. So I mean, just the fact that we ran into that one little guy so quickly right off the bat tells me um, there could be others, maybe. Just a hunch. And you know, I've been thinking that this material might be heading pretty much straight out to the garden soon after I considered it as um, depopulated and officially harvested. And you know, I definitely see potworms in here, a good many of them. These are little um, white worms that I could see here and there and um, yeah you know they they don't really count as far as worms that I plan on transferring over into the new habitat the pot worms are they just sort of come and go you know and some of them really do grow quite large and even though I consider it as the um, you know the quote-unquote mixed red worm population this these little guys um aren't red worms <laughs> so the pot worms don't um don't go for the family reunion they just stay with the compost and i thought i saw a little baby worm there there we go oops so it is probably fair to assume that I've um, left a few others behind. Not the end of the world. They'll um, they'll just get to go a different way than all their brothers and sisters. They'll get to go outdoors into the great wide open. But that makes it official. The old mixed red worm bin is now depopulated, and the castings are officially harvested. There's chunks of stuff in here. I could probably take the time to pick out and yeah, maybe at some point when I'm actually going through this stuff in a little bit more um, detail um, maybe I will grab anything that seems like it could use some more work and just return it to an active worm bin but officially I'm going to treat this as harvested casting so on to feeding the new bin and family reunion time too so let's get that started all right, so now every system needs its own little twist to set it apart from all the others, right? <laughs> so 
So this one, besides just being different by being the only system I have with the mixed worms, the other twist here is the way we built this system with a material, a bedding material that I consider to be um, a little bit out of the ordinary. Not out of the ordinary from a general um, worm farming perspective, but more out of the ordinary from the fact that I don't use this stuff very frequently. And the reason I don't use it very frequently is because I've been hoarding it for a very long time, waiting for some opportunity like this, new bin here, <laughs> to deploy a whole bunch of this type of gray and white cardboard, like um, these boxes that you take home the leftovers from a restaurant, or these egg cartons here, or other stuff like that. So. This system was built with um, bedding built out of cardboard, that weird kind of cardboard, that carton cardboard, and a whole bunch of twine. <laughs> twine of various shapes and sizes and lengths. So this, um, this is definitely an unusual system from that perspective. So I didn't really know what to expect, so to set this place up for them when we deployed them into here 14 days ago, just fold this over and hopefully these little guys will be content just to stay put in this piece of paper for a moment. <laughs> so I um, kind of excavated a little bit of a hole down here into which I just placed some shredded paper and cardboard and onto that went the feeding. So here's like just that prepared shredded paper cardboard type bedding and after after two weeks, I doubt that there's going to be any leftovers from that previous feeding. Because that was quite some time ago, and there's a good number of worms in here. I got feedback from eight viewers, and those eight viewers' um, guesstimates as to how many worms occupy this system, averaged with my estimate, takes us to a population of this system here at an estimated 2,000. 995 worms, you know, just five shy of 3,000, which is a really nice size population, but don't forget, we're going to grow that population today by a certain amount. How much that amount is, I don't know, because that'll be determined once again with your help from us looking at what gathered in the bait box and how many worms were reuniting with the rest of the gang by emptying that bait box into here now today. So this is definitely an awkward material to examine <laughs> in terms of just checking, checking it out and seeing what's there. But you know, after only 14 days, it's not too surprising that large objects are still very recognizable as what they were, like this top of an egg carton over here, and all the rope and everything, and then even some of these leftovers that came with the worms <laughs> when they were released in here last time. So thank you to everyone who participated in the estimation of the population in here. 29, 29.95 worms. Just so weird how it feels like I can actually just pick up this entire um, environment and examine it from underneath. <laughs> something, that, something that this um, setup actually seems to offer as a benefit. I was just curious, you know, any standing water left? Because the system definitely had a good inch or two, maybe an inch deep. Um, you know, so, you know, this much standing water at the bottom, maybe even more. When the worms were first introduced so i'm sure they were really enjoying that too oh this piece of gourd here <laughs> i remember when this thing got dropped in here last time it was uh, full of worms so pumpkin stem gourd bits leftovers from the last feeding let's uh let's get this system fed so that we can get the reunion taken care of and leave these little guys in peace i've just been so curious about how this system's coming along with this unusual bedding that it received and um, just the fact that the system was deployed swampy kind of with standing water in it 
which is generally a no-no. You don't want to have standing water in your worm bins. But here with this unusual type of bedding material that I'm not accustomed to using, I just you know felt a little bit safer doing it that way. So um, that was my rationale. So let's bring in today's yummy portion. I've got some dry toast <laughs> and a variety of stuff. I see banana peel, I see strawberry bits, I see asparagus maybe, and a bit, uh, tom uh, tomato, strawberry, even a couple little fragments of frost and ice. And I've also got this... Um, not worm chow, looks like worm chow, but let's throw in some grit, pulverized eggshell. Um, this stuff here. <laughs> this is pulverized peanut shell. Trying to get rid of it instead of throwing the stuff into my compost bin outside where I know that that stuff will just sit there forever. I figure I might be better off um, grinding it up. And you know, this, this consistency uh, the worms can definitely make use of it at, at that size, as opposed to whole peanut shells, which the worms can't really do much with for a very, very long time. <laughs> All right, definitely an unusual system. You know, I, uh, geez, I even thought about giving them some coffee because I got some coffee here. Why don't we do that? Why don't we just treat that as sort of a top sprinkle application of additional yummy foods for them to nibble on out here on the top and the bedding so my my thought my thoughts on bedding was that this setup here this bait box because um yes it is reunion time <laughs> this bait box it um it just has so much material in it even though it's been here for two weeks there were not many worms that had to get rounded up out of the finished castings so you know, not sure if there's any kind of hanging out in between any layers of this cardboard. And maybe I'm just going a little bit overboard, but I guess my rationale is that I want you to see it. You know, I want you to be able to check out exactly what's going on here in terms of how many worms we're adding to this system today. So uh, as I do oftentimes, I'm turning to you guys as the viewers to please provide me with a comment. So let me know how many worms we just added to the system so I can keep a good, healthy estimate of how many worms live here. And this to me seemed right here like a nice bedding boost. So I thought that by giving them all this stuff that this thing was made up out of, as well as these sheets of cardboard, where um, we're not, you know, being cheap with bedding so let's let these guys get settled in all right we're almost done here but this last ingredient I want to include is some pulverized mosquito dunks and I always used to prepare the mosquito dunks in solution, but um, more recently I've found that it seems to be a lot more potent, I believe, by being deployed this way. So I thought I saw a couple signs of flying insect movement out here, and I figured, you know what, let's, let's just play it safe and deploy the stuff whether or not we see um, a big swarm or not it's it's fair to assume that flying insects might want to take the opportunity to move into a nice fresh bin like this so let's uh let's nip any bright ideas like that in the bud <laughs> and extinguish them as soon as we can so now i i did contemplate coming back in here with somewhat more feeble deliberately more feeble coverings possibly excluding the um the big plastic sheet that you saw when we first arrived in here and you know I almost feel like I'd like to go with it a little bit longer I'd like to just stick to using that for just a little bit longer and I could see there's all kinds of various things here like this 
coffee filter. <laughs> Even, look at that, a, a, a printout version of the, uh, the diagram. Oh man, do I really want to handle it by doing so? I'll probably destroy it. I think you can tell what it is though. It's what we looked at in the beginning. <laughs> the old systems uh, diagram printout. So slowly but surely, this thing will all fade into the past and just become a, a memory here in their new system. I guess these mixed red worms are going to be known for kind of being the, uh, the test pilots to see how living in this type of unusual bedding material, especially all that twine seems a little bit unusual, but to me it seems like they're digging it. They're all over the place. They're everywhere occupying all the material everywhere so I just figured you know what since things do look pretty good I want to just kind of keep things as much as I can the way they were when we first got in here and let it ride so let's uh let's see how that goes as far as getting rid of these flying insects I could see more and more of them showing up all over the place keeping my fingers crossed for the the BTI to work <laughs> all right everyone that's it for the video hopefully you enjoyed it if you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.